Greetings, drinking buddies. I'm joined by a very good friend of the channel, Stephen Butt here. Uh, he made, he wrote uh, a lot of the music we use on the channel, especially uh, my wonderful uh, theme song. And uh, I thought I would introduce him into the world of bourbon through the Buffalo Trace Distillery. So this should be pretty fun. I'm super excited. I'm your drinking buddy. So in front of us, we have a great flight of Buffalo Trace whiskeys, and there's really no way to start Buffalo Trace than without starting with Buffalo Trace. So this first glass here yes. is going to be Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace. This is a uh, straight bourbon whiskey, about six years old. Um, might even be about seven years old. Awesome. What, 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 what are we doing? You don't have a hot sauce to your whiskey? Oh, no, no, no hot sauce. <laughs> Um, this right. is a good time to mention that Stephen has got a great channel called The Weekly Butt Burn where he and his brother uh, taste hot sauces to, you know, uh, kill themselves, basically. Uh, uh, th yeah. There's a lot of punishment that goes down on this uh, channel and uh, they do some really fun, really f funny stuff too. So. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, so what we're going to do here is you're going to go in with your nose kind of fast and bring it out, kind of fast and bring it out and give it a like, I don't know, about five or six, five or six good smells. And then maybe tell me what you think about the nose. See if you can pick up any, any like smells that you might be familiar with. It's very sweet, almost kind of like a brown sugar-ish. Yeah, I like that, <laughs> very good. So um, I would say that bourbons usually have a sweeter nose on them than most scotches. Bourbons tend to be sweeter than most scotches. So you, uh, I say this because you mostly drink scotch, correct? Correct, yeah. yes. Um, so yeah, brown sugar is a really, really good um, starting point there for sure, because there's definitely brown sugar here. What about sherry? Do you smell sherry? I suppose I do, yes, just a hit. I don't want to influence you, but I, well, I, these, this lineup is known for having sherry as, 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 a, as a common flavor, so. Yeah, well, now that you mention it, I, I feel like I can smell the cherry, but I don't think I would have landed on that. Like I would, have, I wouldn't have been able to pick it out. <laughs> I don't have a very sophisticated nose. Um, you know, it's, it's something you kind of have to learn to do. Um, so go ahead, let's go ahead and take a sip of this. Uh, I would say it doesn't have to be a very big sip, and uh, just kind of hold it in for a minute and kind of like just let it linger on your tongue, so you can really get the finish really well. All right. Hmm, that's good. A lot of flavor. I'll say that. Um, I still get kind of that, like a, a light vanilla sort of brown sugar. Um. Vanilla is a really, really good note to notice because it is really prominent on this Buffalo Trace and it's also like a classic bourbon flavor that you might pick up on a lot of bourbons, but especially on this one. Okay. So that's a, that's that's a very good note. Good. To so I'm not I'm not too far off the mark no, on that one. No, and I, <laughs> I I should clarify. I don't want to look like I'm some gatekeeper or anything like that here. Um, I think that bourbon is approachable for anyone, and, and enjoy it however you want to enjoy it. You don't have to do the steps that I'm saying or anything <laughs> like that. I'm just saying I feel like these are some steps to make it a little bit easier to pick up on, on some of the, the the flavors. I do have a lot of people who will, who will catch one of my videos who's maybe not a bourbon drinker, and the comment will almost always be something like. You don't really taste all that. You're full of crap. Well, no, I, I do. I really do taste all that. It's just it's it's a refined thing. You kind of have to, you yeah. know, refine your palate to learn to taste this stuff. And yeah, I I don't want it to come off as gatekeeping though. Yeah. Bourbon is a community <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> uh, you know, I've often been amazed at like all the flavors and things that you can pick out of there. I, I never thought you were full of crap, but I was okay. like, wow, he's really good at that because I. <laughs> It is considered an allocated bottle though, so it is one where when they do get it at stores, it'll say limit one. It's gonna be a, um, a situation where in some states they probably can't find it at all, um, but here in Arizona, I would not consider it to be a very difficult bottle to find. So it's not gonna be one of those bottles you go in and they're like, oh, if you buy six, you can get a discount. <laughs> no, no, in fact, they will They will generally probably be not very happy if you try to buy six. I've never done that, by the way. I've never bought six of any. <laughs> yeah, any yeah I, I don't think I have either, unless I walked into a place and there was six of something that I could never find ever, and I might buy six. However, they're going to have a limit one on it generally if it's yeah. something you can't find. So, And also, I probably want to leave some for everybody else. So. Yeah, it's only right. fair. So this second one is a completely different mash bill, but it's from the same distillery, and this is going to be Weller Special Reserve. So that's this bottle right here. Um, this one is uh, supposed to be about a $30 bottle, 
but it often is sold up to 100 because it's so hard to find. Um, wow. In Texas, for example, Texas and Ohio, for example, this bottle seems to be everywhere. But if you don't live in one of those two states, you probably have to uh, um, hunt for this one. I've seen it on shelves a handful of times in Arizona. 90 proof again, but instead of rye in this one, it's wheat. Okay. So this will be at least 51% corn. All bourbons have to be at least 51% corn. And then the secondary grain instead of rye is going to be wheat. Hmm. Notice differences on the nose? It is a bit different. I still feel like I smell vanilla, but... Yeah, I could definitely see that. I tend to feel that the weeder, weeded bourbons have um, more of a grain smell. So almost like like cereal or like oatmeal, smelling that. Um, okay. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Well, this one's pretty smooth. Yeah, th I would say this is a uh, this is smoother than the first one. As uh, you know, maybe maybe that word smooth might mean you know hitting below its proof. Doesn't taste like it's ninety proof. Might taste. You know, you, when you when you sip this, it, I would probably guess this is an 80 proofer uh, because yeah. it, it, it's it is smooth. It's nice though. What are some flavors that you uh, you're picking up here? Mm. Yeah, it, it still has the vanilla too for me, um, but I, I feel like it's a, a little bit more heavy on the the cherry end of the the flavor. Mm -hmm. um, Still hard for me to pick these things out, though. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that that's fair. I think by the end of this, you'll be able to. Uh, you're gonna be a whiskey expert. You're gonna you're gonna be starting your own whiskey channel by the end of this. <laughs> no, nah, I'll leave that to the pros. <laughs> um, have you ever seen the movie John Wick? You know, it's been on our to watch list, but it, it's like pulling teeth to get my wife to watch something new. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that movie was really popular, and it, it popularized this bottle. This is a Blanton's. And this is the original single barrel. Um, so now single barrel is a term you might see on hundreds of bottles of whiskey, hundreds of bottles of, of bourbon, but this was the first, you know, like commercially available uh, single barrel. Uh, the juice in here came from only one barrel. Is there um, anything special about this? this yeah, here? yeah. So they do have a letter on each one and they spell out Blanton's. I have an N here. Um, and if you get them all, you can actually send them off to the distillery and they'll mount them on a little thing for you. Oh, cool. um, but you'd have to find more bottles than one, more bottles than one, because this is the only one I've ever found, and it's almost empty. So one day maybe I'll be able to spell out more than mm, because right now I can only spell out mm, 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 mm. So well, this is Blanton's on this next. If I ever see one of those, I'll let you know. You won't. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty confident about that, yeah. I can tell. <laughs> yeah. This is Blanton's. Cheers, bud. Cheers. Mm. So we're kind of getting just the same sort of notes that I got off of the first two on the nose. Uh, you know, the cherry, vanilla, brown sugar. Yeah. But this one also, for me, has a little bit of a apple thing. Apple? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say rubbing alcohol. Yeah, I, <laughs> hey, well, you're putting your nose in too far then. No, oh, okay. okay. No, I'm just kidding. Hmm. You can sometimes get a, oh, and this is a 93 proof, so it's a little bit hotter than the, the others, but barely. Okay. Oh, I feel like I can taste the apple, too. A little bit of apple on the flavor, for sure. Yeah. Less cherry than the other two, but it's still there, I feel. Yeah. And uh, um, I would say this one tastes noticeably hotter than the other two despite only being th uh, six proof points hotter. No, three point proof points hotter. Um, it definitely smells hotter than them. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, I would say I find Blanton's to be a little bit overrated. People go crazy for this bottle, um, but I didn't feel like it would be right to do a Buffalo Trace flight without it because it's just such an iconic bottle, the iconic uh, the, the iconic name, and uh, what everything it, the bottle stands for as a pop culture icon, I wanted to include it so you could kind of all right, yeah. It's good. Yeah, now on this one, I definitely smell a little bit more of the, uh, like the oaky barrel char than I did on the others. Would you say that you agree with that? Yeah. I do think this one is a little bit older. Um, we, just, we don't know exactly how old Lance is, but they're between six and eight years old. So. Okay. 
Hmm. Well, let's dramatically increase our age here. Yeah. Let's double it. Oh man, it's like waking up <laughs> at a hotel and you go into where they serve breakfast and they always have the coffee going and it's like that exact coffee. Probably, <laughs> probably. So this guy here is going to be uh, E.H. Taylor Single Barrel. Ooh, this one smells a lot different. Um, this is 100 proof and it's uh, just under 12 years old. So it's between 11 and 12 years old. Now, as if someone who drinks scotch, you know, 11 to 12 years old probably doesn't sound very old, for, but for bourbon, that's actually quite old. Um, things age much faster in Kentucky than they do in, in Scotland, and most of the commercially available bourbons are between three and eight years old. Um, mm. Whereas, so when it gets older than that, it's, it's generally, it's pretty old. This one, it, the smell is very um, mild in comparison. Softer nose than the one that we just drank that's seven points lower. That's how you say it. Okay. Softer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Softer. No, hey, you're good. You're good. This is why I, I have that whole thing about how I'm not trying to be a gatekeeper. I didn't mean to correct you there. <laughs> oh, no. I'm learning. I'm learning. I want to learn. Um, yeah, so it's it does have a similar nose to the Buffalo Trace, I feel. So the first yeah. one we smelled. The vanilla. Vanilla. That is what pops mm -hmm. out to me. And, but there's a little bit more of that oak charred note definitely on this one. definitely Ooh, that's very flavorful i like that more so yeah i would i think that there's a little bit more going on here i think there's a few reasons for that one being the higher proof the less water is being added the less water is being added the more flavors you're going to be able to pick up the battle that most people have when it comes to that is the higher the proof, the hotter it's going to be. At a certain point, you're going to reach a point where a whiskey is just too hot for your palate. And so for me, that's probably like 200 proof. Uh, <laughs> but for some people, that's 100 proof. Some people will taste 100 proof whiskey and they, that's just too hot for them. Um, however, I don't think that this is too hot for most people. I feel like this is pretty uh, um, noticeably still in that smooth category where it doesn't taste yeah. Too uh, dramatically hot, it, as it well as less hot than some of these other ones. I agree. That's dangerous. Part of it comes <laughs> from the fact that I, I, there's less water in there, so you're picking up more flavors. You're, there's there's yeah. more going on in this. You might not be able to name what all of these flavors are, but there's there's more of a dance going on. There is. Oh, I that sounds accurate. <laughs> Some cherry and vanilla and, and brown sugar and cinnamon and. Uh, the, the oak and the barrel char and, and uh, maybe even a little bit of that apple that we picked up off the last one. Yeah. Yeah, it's all very much more pronounced. Um, which is funny because it had such a, a softer nose. Yeah. You know? Yeah, softer nose, um, more flavor on the palate from that 100 proof, and uh, definitely longer finish. Well, last up we have the piece de resistance here. Um, this is Van Winkle. So Van this, Winkle. This is uh, Old Rib Tens. This is 10 years old. Um, this is an extremely hard bottle to find. It retails about 90 bucks, but if you find it, you're probably paying over a thousand dollars for this bottle. Wow. Um, I did not pay that much. I paid retail for it, but generally, <laughs> if you can find this bottle, you're, you're paying way more than that $90 price tag. That's really awesome. I'm honored to be able to sample this here. I, I have my uh, bourbon so that I can taste it, or share it. I have my bourbon so that I can share it and drink it. Uh, I don't believe in hoarding this stuff. If I get a bottle, I generally open it that night. I don't believe in reselling this stuff. I just yeah. believe in, in, if I want a bottle, I'm going to buy it to, to taste. And you know what? I don't think he's ever made a, uh, an appearance on the channel. Come here. Come here. <laughs> my, my chihuahua wandered in here, so he's going to taste this uh, whiskey with me. Not really, though. You don't feed dogs whiskey. Yeah. You can smell it. You want to smell it? Like it. smell it? He's not interested. Hard on the nose, apparently. No, I'm just kidding. More, more nose for me, I guess. It smells good, though. It's got a very... Very tame, like dessert, sort of finish to it. Kind of reminiscent of the uh, the blend you brought over the other day. Yeah, I when when I did the uh, uh, the weeded bourbon tournament, I actually couldn't tell the difference between that blend and this one. Like wow. they're so similar. 
Um, yeah, All right, so I would say definitely try to hold this one in. Ooh, that's nice. This one's got a little bit of a peanut thing going on for me that I don't normally pick up off a of buffalo trace, but there's a little bit here, which is why I think I can confuse it with that um, Prudent Pappy, which has Larceny in it, which straight up tastes like peanuts. So. Yeah. Hmm. Well. That was trip. So, noticeably different, noticeably better than the rest, noticeably mediocre compared to the rest, noticeably bad compared to the rest. I would say noticeably better than the first three, um, and I'd still say it's better than this one, but it's a little bit more of a close. Uh, they're a little closer. Um, My only knock, I would say, on this bottle is I definitely feel like you. Uh, you can pick up on the heat more on this one without mm. it being substantially more flavorful than the last. Uh, that E.H. Taylor Single Barrel is a really hard bottle to beat. And this is a really good bottle too, but uh, yeah, 107 proof, it does taste like it's 107 proof. That is true. It does have quite a bit of heat. It's good though. But cherries and peanuts for me, um, a lot of oak. This one I think is I, there's a reason people hunt for this stuff. It is it's really solid. It's really solid. I, I feel it. So these are five really good Buffalo Trace uh, uh, bottles. Um, what was your favorite? I think just even for the fact that I can say I've had it, the, the Pappy Van Winkle, you know. <laughs> I've talked to people, all, all the people I've talked to about whiskey, they're like, oh, the Pappy Van Winkle's the best. and um, But I don't think they've... Most of them have ever really had one. You know? Yeah, yeah. I've I've tasted several of the line. Um, this is the only one I've ever bought. Um, this one doesn't technically say Pappy on the label, so sometimes people will, will tell you that you're you're calling a bottle Pappy that's not Pappy, but it's Pappy Van Winkle, and this is the Rip Van Winkle, but it's still Pappy. I don't. Know. <laughs> there you go, Rip Van Winkle. So yeah, 107 proof, aged 10 years. Um, Eighty dollar bottle, probably should. Pr it's it's excellently priced at eighty bucks. Yeah. Well, drinking buddies, this has been really fun. I'm really glad Stephen came on the channel so we could do this little flight here, uh, so you could try out some, some somewhat. The last three were definitely rare bourbons, um, and uh, what do you think overall? <laughs> Your dogs are going crazy. Yeah. Overall, these are really great um, bourbons to try. I'm very honored that you would have me over to try these, um, and I'm honored to be a part of your uh, your channel as well. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely will have to have you back on here. This was really fun. Um, definitely, yeah, check out the Butt Burn, Weekly Butt Burn. I will put a link in the description, of course. Thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate you. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers, drinking buddies. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Cheers, drinking buddies. Hmm.